Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. All right, let's look at this book I have called The Beginner's Guide to Comic Art Characters. It is a landscape. As you can see, it's by 3D Total Publishing. Uh, let me shift over here. Unfortunately, the whole book won't fit in camera, but uh, most of it will. So the good stuff will. This came out in 2016. Table of Contents, a forward, tools of the trade, essential skills, body faces, poses, essential, essential skills, part two, inking and coloring, character projects. So it gives you like character projects to work on. Uh, there's a gallery, quick tips, a glossary. The whole book is 204 pages. I will probably skip stuff, not get through the whole book. Because once again, if you want it, go to 3D Publishing and buy it. Forward is by David Nakayama. I believe he's a Kubert school. Uh, managed to make my living art since I left school in 2003. Uh, I guess I'm, not I th I'm not sure. Tools of the trade. We've got uh, Bristol board paper illustration. So it goes through different types of paper, getting to know your paper. Uh, we've got Copic markers and it talks about the numbering system for Copic markers. And it shows you here, and it goes into how they number them, because there is a specific way Copic does their numbering as well. Alcohol-free versus fine liner pens. So it goes into different type of pens that people use. Uh, refills for Copic markers, how to refill them. Uh, correcting mistakes. So that's pretty cool. What did he use to correct that? Uh, it's more of an eraser that appears to bleach the ink away. What actually ha Okay, so a colorless blender, uh, which is not exclusive to Copit, isn't actually a blender. It's more of an eraser that appears to bleach the ink away. What actually happens is that the blender pushes the ink around so the ink is generally pushed through to the other side of the paper to no longer be visible where it was originally applied. This does come in handy if you've gone out of your line art and need to lighten areas or you don't realize you have ink on your finger. Oh, look at that. I've had this book for a few years, learn something new every day, probably because I don't use Copics much, but that's pretty cool. Tells you how to avoid over blending, avoid light on darks, difference in nibs. So nice little tutorial on Copic stuff. Shows you the broad nib, the brush nib, uh, smooth, flat colors. The key to achieving smooth, flat colors is to apply the ink fast enough so that the leading edge on the paper stays wet. This will mean it will blend when you go over it again with more ink because the ink is saturated enough to blend into itself. That's cool. I kind of already knew that. Single marker, tonal range, adding highlights and shine right here like I said unfortunately I just I, I can't get the book far enough away to where you can see everything so maybe I'll end up sliding it over uh, it talks about digital tools uh, by Borislav Mikkoff he's talking about Photoshop I should actually uh, read this page to see if there's any things I don't know or things I forgot. Talks about layers and blending modes. Screen modes. Selection and transform tools. All sorts of fun stuff. So this book will be kind of like a beginner's guide for Photoshop as well. Um, useful Corel painter features. Now, once again, that means going to a different program, uh, and I do not have Corel Painter. Uh, but if you do, there's some nice stuff in here for that. Art Rage Tips. Art Rage is another uh, color program. Sorry for the shine on the book as well, but I gotta have light. 
uh, Essential Skills, part one. The body, illustrated by Steve Rude. You can't get better than Steve Rude. Steve Rude is a student of Andrew Loomis. So even though Steve did these drawings right here, if you look at Andrew Loomis, they're very uh, Andrew Loomis as well. So Steve Rude talking about drawing the body. He shows this is a basic mannequin right here that Steve uses when he draws. You can almost see the basic shape underneath. Uh, the female mannequin he uses. And then here it's blocking in the planes and stuff uh, for drawing, for lighting and such. Very helpful, of course. Steve's drawing different size people. Look, uh, I did not give him permission to draw me. Steve, what the? Jesus. Feed this woman a sandwich. And then here we have uh, the big uh, the big crushing dude uh, right here. So there you go. So this is all Steve Rude stuff here. Let's go through. He talks about planes of the face. I, I did skip some pages. Like I said, don't want to... Uh, don't want to give the whole book away. Stuff on drawing faces and hair. Planes of the face. Facial expression. Posing the figure. Once again, this is very Andrew Loom Loomis-esque. Uh, more stuff on body language. I mean, Steve is just, he's just the man. Dancing figures. So, okay, so we I think we've got the hint. Uh, flying poses. Uh, I think you guys are uh, getting the idea. Essential skills, part two, part two. Uno, dos, part dos, inking. So we're going to talk about inking. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about digital or no, he's printing it out, printing out the page in non-photo blue. This is how he prepares the page uh, for doing that. I might have to try this one time. I have not tried this technique for printing a page in blue. I do something different. I usually receive the pencil drawing as a digital file. A file like this is often too large to send via email, so it's usually sent using online file transfer. The pencil lines need to be converted to blue lines for printing. Adobe Photoshop CS2 is now free to download. It's perfect for preparing pages. To get the page ready for printing, you need to set the image mode to RGB so you can adjust the color. Follow these simple steps. Choose image, taskbar, adjust, hue, saturation. Uh, it's good to, idea to make sure the colorized box is checked as well as is preview so that you can see the adjustment set hue to 198 saturation to 100 and lightness to 74. I'm going to have to try that for the next page I print in blue. See how that works. Um, he's going over some inking tools here. You will notice his inking tools are not traditional in the standpoint of you don't see a real brush that you dip in pen. He uses a Pentel pocket brush and some microns and then this whiteout pen, the Molotow is good. I actually have that one. And he's going to talk about his inking process here, different line weights, things like that. So it's a good little uh, tutorial on inking for those that are just getting into it. And then uh, he shows the finished cover uh, right there. Well, if they wanted uh, inking stuff, they could have contacted me and I know a couple other guys that are uh, really good at inking too. Let's get that better in the frame. Coloring. So now we get into some coloring stuff. Talk about flatting here and then uh, rendering. So, well, first flatting. Uh, he's adding this background digitally. So that's pretty cool. Adding some fencing and barbed wire. It's got some special effects here. He talks about flames to add the flames. The background I've used here is a background that I've used before. It's a mix of gradient fills, cloud photos, and other sort of texture photos that I made one day, then save for future uses. So that's cool. So he made these flames. So that's pretty cool. So he's got the background in. 
so now he can he's got a light established so now he starts go and doing the rendering he shows you a screenshot here for uh, the layers and blending options and stuff so he's just talking about the different different ways he does rendering and stuff. And everybody, you know, all colorists have different ways they go about doing their own uh, rendering. Character projects: the Reptilian Hero by by uh, Ilya Golostein. Wait, Golosin. All right, screwed that up. But you guys are used to that. So it's a reptilian hero. She's collecting uh, reference material on reptiles. You've got some cool drawings here for initial concepts. First sketches. Uh, design Bible and proportions are always good. I always recommend working out a sheet like this. So you can uh, see your character in full when drawing if it's a new character. This guy's eight heads. This dude is ten. So he's up there. Lion art workflow, talking about head sculpt and facial expression. So this is really taking it. I don't know how to do 3D sculpting, but this person did a 3D sculpt of the head. You do something like that, you can look at it at any angle. So that's really awesome. Here we've got adaptation of forms. Uh, illustration thumbnail. So he's got a thumbnail going on here. Uh, dynamic perspective talks about talks about visual storytelling they set this mannequin up for lighting reference so that's pretty cool did the sketch out of their head set a mannequin up for lighting reference which is always good obviously figure out the perspective and then they're doing construction over top of their sketch all this stuff is what I teach when I when I teach drawing and then going into inking and of course, starting the coloring, and this takes us through their coloring process as well. Now we're looking at the male villain, Fiddler Johnny, by Borislav Mitkoff. Got some initial sketches, uh, the face ideation, talking about choosing the right pose, accessories. And they just work you through their 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 way of uh, drawing, designing a character. You know, little tagging things, uh, tattoo stuff on the uh, violin case here for tagging. Female villain, the princess by Marco Powell. Very nice drawing. Every artist in this book is really really nice. They do really good work. It's very nice too. Just see the different styles in the book. Talking about the pose, the design for the pose, adding the clothing, and then of course this is a colored sketch. So some people will do colored sketches with Copics, and then from there, setting up the inking process. Uh, I believe this looks like it was inked digitally. And then talking about coloring the line art. And this person does a gray tone value study first before they do color. So that's cool. And then talking about the base coloring and adding highlights. Getting more into the final pieces. And it's great, you know, because I'm not an expert colorist like some of my buddies are. So I can read stuff like this to go, oh, that's a great way to learn how to do that. Oh, tips and tricks, baby. Tips and tricks. Sci-fi female. Her name is Dawn by Sakasan. This is one of the drawings I think is really cool. Top tip to follow this tutorial properly. Make sure that your first layer is white and that your brush is black. So this is all digital. I'm already liking this, this art right here. Look at that, she's coming out good. Uh, nice boobages and cleavengers. If you know me, you know that's what I say. Flat coloring, getting more into uh, the rendering side of things here. Talking about coloring the lines, controlling luminosity, 
adding shading. They do it a different way. So all these different techniques add diffuse lighting, which looks cool. This is on a separate layer, but then when you see it, this is what the layer looks like as a normal. And then once you switch it to a screen, I believe, you can see how it adds these brightnesses to it. Uh, so that's very cool. Let's just pull it over here so you guys can see. Adding a backlight to it. I mean, this, this is one of the sweetest pieces in this book. Look at that final. So very cool. Just a great, great drawing. I love that style. I should do a first man animated or manga book. Post-apocalyptic male, the shaman. I will not even try to pronounce this guy's name. No offense, but did your parents just throw letters together? Obviously, uh, you are not from this country, which is cool because it doesn't matter. Your art is awesome. So look at this little photo reference, like from my Drawing Dynamic comic book, comics uh, how-to book. You can see how he adapted the photo reference to the drawing here. Uh, sketched out the character. So he's doing different sketches here. And then uh, he gets in a little tighter right there. He's just taking you through the process of drawing this uh, on... Uh, in Photoshop, it looks like he's using. So this is good if you want to do everything digitally. This is uh, definitely showing you how to do it. Then he's talking about adding color. Very nice. The linear dodges and stuff. I'm glad I'm doing this. I haven't looked at this book in a while and I totally forgot about some of the cool things in Photoshop that uh, are in this book. He's doing rim lighting. So he walks you through how to do that. And then of course, final touches. And then we get, and here I'll hold this up so there's not a glare. You get the nice uh, finished piece of the shaman who apparently, uh, you know, he just picked up things from around his travels, football gear. I mean, that's a pretty cool character design, you know? We've got the Villainous Henchman by Marco Powell to go along with the female that he did earlier. Dude doesn't look too villainous to me. But once again, you can see some of his underdrawing here. How many heads high is this guy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight heads high. That's what uh, you're taught to do. So he starts off with uh, the pose. He does the clothing, does his grayscale. Does a colored sketch, set up the inking process. Like I said, I believe all this inking is done digitally. That's pretty cool. Shade and color shading he's doing right here. Then he's going in from the flats. He's adding rendering. And these pages are about adding textures and patterns, which is really cool to do. That, it's stuff like that that, I, I'll be honest, I don't know how to do. Um, he's got some lettering on this dude's shoulder, uh, shoulder armor, which is cool. Female Superhero by Lewis. Working out some different sketches. This guy's doing traditional stuff. You can see his tools he's using. Look at that great cartoony, more cartoon exaggerated feel to this character that I think is really nice. He's talking about storytelling because even in a single pose like this, you can concentrate on get a, get a story across. Inking, he flips the image. That's always a good way to flip it so you can see if there's anything uh, that you don't like. So he's doing the inking. Made a mistake, hit the little white out. No need to cry over mistakes. You can see he's Xing the black areas. I bet he's gonna fill those in in Photoshop. Talking about the gargoyle, and then here it is, done. Finishing touches, so I take it back. He did fill the blacks in with uh, ink. He scanned it and cleaned it up. Laying down the flats, 
and he goes into color uh, and there's not much. Nope, this is it. This is what you get for this guy on color. He says uh, that he's even not that much of a colorist. But you know what? There's lots of other color techniques in this book, but you still get to see at least the flats to the finish. So that's pretty cool. Sci-Fi Mail, The Nightingale by Pasquale Quilano. Is he going to do this dramatic upshot? Now, I'm not sure I would go for a dramatic upshot like that. I wouldn't go for the B sketch either because you don't see much of his body. But, you know, showing you the tools he uses, lots of Copics and pens. Showing the initial drawing look, Dude work, works on a light box. So he did his sketch. Now he's going to trace it off tighter. Traces it off and it looks like his blue pencil, nice and tight. He begins the shading. I don't think any of this is going to be computer. Ooh, let's see. It's been so long. He's beginning the shading with his Copic markers. So that's pretty tight. More shading going on here on the guy. Uh, this is cool. So yeah, everything so far is just totally Copic with this guy. So that's pretty cool. Different technique here. And then uh, now he's going to start the inking. So now he's going to do the black line over the uh, Copic stuff. So he did, remember, this was in blue, light blue originally. This is a technique I've never tried that I might have to experiment with. Because it looks really cool. Let's see. Uh, oh, now he's got it scanned in and he's going to start working digitally. So he is doing some digital stuff. So pretty cool. And I think this is the final result. So he did some glows and stuff in Photoshop and things like that, but he didn't do too much in Photoshop, just added some glow. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty wicked cool. You know, so mixing uh, traditional and digital. Female Cyborg by Gary Chu. Plan Your Piece. I like it on the toned paper. That's pretty cool looking. He's just showing the perspective here on the body with the underlying shapes that are blocks. Pro tip about hairstyles. That's pretty cool. Uh, let me see if that's the pose. Yep. Uh, tightening the pose up. I'm pretty sure this is all... Uh, I think this is all traditional. Or maybe it's not. This might be just a toned... I will render cyborg, cyborg human with bionic limb. Always plan ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to see if it says, start by using a mid-tone background as the base of the drawing. So this is all digital. He just started with a mid-tone background. So that's pretty cool. So this is all digital he's doing. Now add to the storytelling. Uh, talking about subtle design stuff here. Block out the shadows. So, you know, you can literally just be really simple to block out the shadows on a separate layer so you know where they are to work off of. And we're getting into uh, lighting with white. So he's using white to pull out some lighting. It's rendering the glove. Let's see, doesn't say anything there. Get the electro panel lines. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost sure this is all digital. Rendering the torso. Uh, let's see. See, to add some color. Yeah, this is uh, coloring some white. Yeah, this is all digital torso with some lighting and then uh there's the finished piece which looks like it's almost done traditionally but uh this was all done uh digital so that's pretty cool that's a nice effect to it and then we get to the gallery so the gallery is just uh some of the artists in this book showing off their work so you get to see different pieces by the different artists. 
and such. This is a step-by-step -step process for this piece, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. Here's another step-by-step -step process for this character that has uh, four arms. That's pretty wicked. Pretty wicked. Uh, this is the property of Spirisoft right here. So these are just design things that were done for a company. So those are pretty cool. These are all done digitally. Uh, Punk Rock Elliot Team Ninja. This was for something as well. So you can see just the line art. Some more rendering. And then the final piece. A couple more pieces here. Uh, this looks like it was done for a comic. Because over here we've got this one. Looks like a cover. I don't know if that was ever printed. This is Andre Lunatic. That's a ton of work. This is very, uh, that reminds me a lot of Dave Finch. See, in black and white, that's hard to look at in color. Very easy. Steampunk Girl. Yeah, that stuff is real Dave Finchy looking. Which is very cool. And then Jurgen Kukui. Sure, I pronounced that wrong. I'm just going to leave it like this, I think, for the final stuff. And then quick tips. Let's, let's go through some quick tips. We got weapons, quick tips on weapons, uh, drawing a gun, a sword, a shuriken, a bow. So these are just quick tips on drawing that. Animal textures, feathers. So that's pretty cool. Scales. Bone texture, fur, hair, elemental texture, cyclone wind, uh, rocks, water, nice movement in the water there, fireball, that's a cool way to do a fireball, electricity and lightning, clothing texture, uh, cotton, spandex, pretty neat, metal, which is really cool to, to uh, figure out how to do metal, uh, sheer fabric, sheer leather, and then the glossary, we get to meet the artist right here, so that's cool, and then of course an index, and uh, 3D's Total Anatomical Collection. Let's see. Oh, I have this book. This is a good book too. Beginner's Guide to Digitally, Digital Painting and Photoshop Characters. I have that book. I'll have to do a flip of that one for you guys. Uh, 3D's Total Anatomical Collection. Affordable anatomical reference figures for traditional digital artists, including male and female planner models and an impressive bio suit figure designed by Alessandro Baudicerononi. Screwed that up. So that's cool. You got the anatomy. You got female and male breaking down into sharper planes of the body. Male anatomy and then uh, male anatomy half and a bio suit the other half. So there you have it. Beginner's Guide to Comic Art Characters. Very cool book. Uh, maybe check it out. 3D Total Publishing. All right, guys, until next time, bye-bye. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth, and now he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from Penumbra before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. You'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2, learning curve.